I'm going to turn it over. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom Fontana, who is the Director of Education and Research for the Ohio Soybean Council. Well, thank you, Jane. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's really great to see so many uh, folks on tonight. Really appreciate your interest in this program. Uh, the Science Fair program supported by the Ohio Soybean Council and the Ohio Soybean Council Foundation oh, has been around mm, for about 15 years now. And we're really proud uh, to be able to provide awards through the foundation uh, to students who do soybean-related projects at district and state uh, science fair. Um, it's a really good program. We enjoy doing it. It's fun. I wish it weren't virtual because I always love to see the students at State Science Day. But our folks at Education Projects, uh, as Jane said, um, are in charge of the State Science Fair for the Ohio Soybean Council and Foundation. We appreciate their work very much on that. Uh, we have lots of good information on Grow Next Gen uh, that could help students uh, and teachers figure out ways to do projects that are being in agriculture related and give them a chance to win uh, $100 district prizes and uh, much larger prizes at State Science Day, 1,500 and 250 individual prizes and a $1,000 team prize courtesy of Education Projects. So why are farmers so excited about Science Fair and Grow Next Gen? It's because they want to make connections in the classrooms of Ohio connect science to agriculture. That's very important to them. It's a good way to teach science. There are lots of good information, curriculum, and other things. Uh, curriculum, workshops for te teachers, e-learning courses, career videos for students and teachers on the Grow Next Gen website. So I encourage you to go there and use those resources and participate. And we look to have a lot of students uh, for our judges to judge next year uh, at district and state, and state science fair. So thanks for attending tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, have a good evening and enjoy all the good information you're going to hear. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tom. Um, we um, we are, sorry, going to move uh, along here fairly quickly. Um, but a couple of things just kind of housekeeping wise, there are a lot of things that um, we'll be talking about tonight. And so I want to um, remind you that if you have questions, please type them in the chat. I'm going to try and monitor the chat. And so we'll try and get everybody's questions answered. If I skip your question, please resubmit it. I apologize. Um, uh we will um, also, I asked before everyone got on, if you would introduce yourself in the chat, just tell tell us and give us an idea of what parts of Ohio you're from, or if you're from other states beyond Ohio, we'd love to hear about that. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Mary Kloppenstein, who is our Science Award Coordinator uh, for Education Projects, and she does uh, get all of those special awards uh, or those special projects uh, judged for us. So let me turn it over to Mary and I'm going to put you on spotlight, Mary, if I can find you in my list. Thanks for the introduction, Jane. Good to see you all this evening. And thanks to Mr. Fontana for providing some background on the heart as to why the Ohio Soybean Bioscience Award exists. I'm on the flip side going to provide a little bit more of the tactical side of the nitty gritty of the award. So uh, the Ohio Soybean Bioscience Award is what we've been referring to this whole time. And as Mr. Fontana mentioned, there are up to three $100 awards 
that are up for grabs at every district across Ohio, and then a slew of larger awards that are available at the State Science Day that you can see on the screen. So another neat perk, in addition to just receiving a monetary award, which is exciting in itself, the winners also have the opportunity to have their research published on the Grow Next Gen website, which we know can be really exciting for our young students to have published research. Um, so you might be thinking, how are our winners chosen for the Ohio Soybean Bioscience Award? We really look at three categories that our judges will be reviewing. Um, one is the connection to the soybean industry. That's a big one for us. We want to make sure that the student can clearly articulate how soybeans interacted with the research and the relevancy to the soybean farmer. Two would be the use of the scientific method. We want to make sure that our award winners have sound science, so making sure that they are following that scientific method to a T is really important for us. And then three, clarity of expression. Is that student able to clearly communicate the research and their findings both verbally and then in their physical presentation, whether that's a poster or a digital slideshow? So a few tips and tricks that we've noticed over the past few years of that really make a project stand out would be one, incorporating soybeans as the main component of the research. We found when students have soybeans as the main component, they tend to shine above others. If your student isn't sure how to get soybeans or, or where to get them, please reach out to Jane. She will be able to connect you with soybeans. Also, the clearer that student can make the connection to the soybean industry for our judges, it just makes it that much easier for our judges to give them more points. So even something as simple as putting soybeans, whether it's the common name or the scientific name, up in the research title, that can be really helpful because then it's just that much easier for our judges to say, ha, ah, this student definitely has a research project about soybeans, and then they just need to uh, check in on the other two categories to award that student points, so they will hopefully be a winner. Uh, the second tip that makes projects stand out is when a student is prepared to clearly articulate why a soybean farmer would really value the research that they did. Um, so prompting a student to think ahead of time about how their research might be beneficial to soybean production or how their research might in better inform on how soy-based products may help the environment or improve food nutrition and animal health, et cetera. Being prepared ahead of time to, to make those connections will really help a student do well uh, with the Ohio Bioscience Award. So that is how a student can do well. Now you might be wondering, how do I get a student involved if they don't necessarily have a, a strong background in soybeans? No problem. We have a lot of curated resources that you can find through this QR code that you'll see on the screen. It leads to the link that you see immediately underneath. So grownextgen.org backslash science fair. On that webpage, you'll find an overview of the award. So all the information I just shared and some, You'll find the exact rubric that our judges follow when they are evaluating your student's research project. There is a host of relevant questions for your student to consider to start to think through what might they be interested in that also has relevancy to a soybean farmer, along with a ton of links where that student can learn more about soybeans and its byproducts. There's also student research that can be found through that website. And once your student dives into a project, um, if they get to a point that they wanna consult a professional, um, they can actually reach out to Jane or they can reach out to me too and I'll redirect them to Jane. Uh, she is the keeper of the knowledge. Uh, but Grow Next Gen has a slew of industry professionals that they're connected with. So uh, of the, anything from a farmer, a researcher, an educator, and we will do what we can to connect your student to an industry professional if they're interested. So lots of resources that are readily available through that QR code on the screen. Um, and then the last note that I would just share is to make sure if your student is interested in being considered for the Ohio Bioscience Award, just to make sure when they're doing that registration for District Science Fair. Um, I, I don't know what that application form looks like, but I know there should be a spot for them to 
opt into wanting to be considered for that award. That's a really important piece that we found sometimes gets overlooked. So just make sure if a student does does apply for the award that they indicate so on their application form. Anything else you'd like me to touch on, Jane? Oh, I think that was very complete. And if anybody has any questions, please put those in the chat. And when we uh, follow up after the webinar, we will also send out this link again. So you don't have to save it on your phone or keep it. We'll, we'll share it with you again. All right. Uh, next up is Angie McMurray. from. Uh, she's the Director of Programs at the Ohio Academy of Science. And so I'm going to let you share your screen, Angie, and then I can spotlight you so we can hear all about what's going on with the Ohio Academy. Great, Jane. Thank you. And thank you to everyone um, at the Ohio Soybean Council, Grow Next Gen, and Education Programs. Um, we're just thrilled to have you all as a, a partner, a collaborator, a sponsor, and a friend. Um, I did want to, I would be, I would be lost if I didn't mention, um, I wanted to make sure I clear up some things um, that Tom did mention at the beginning and not, not all of this is, is virtual. So, um, you know, the going through the process, um, we have our amazing platform that I'm going to share with you all, but, um, we, there's opportunities to have local, uh, events, symposiums, competitions, whatever that might look like for you. I've seen it in so many different ways across the state of Ohio. Um, so at the local level, and that could be within your own classroom, that could be within your school district or your school building or your county. So lots of different ways to have that local in-person event. And it's a great way to touch on, on that presentation piece. And I'm so glad that Mary talked about that because um, it's one of the reasons why I've really highlighted and focused on that presentation component on the project board platform, um, because we do know that in this day and age, students um, can graduate and go get jobs or even apply for college or whatever through a virtual platform. And so we need to help them to learn the skills that they're going to need to master so that they can be successful after high school. And um, so I did want to say that our district science days, all 17 of them are in person. And so those are hosted generously by our higher education partners. And so those are also in-person events and great ways for students to interact with judges um, and local community people right then and there face to face. Though our state science day, the competition component is virtual, um, students do submit uh, multiple platforms of ways to present that information, including their abstract, their final paper, their quad chart, um, and a video. And so all of those different methodologies are very similar to things that they'll need in the real world as they're looking to get a job or to move on to um, higher education. Our State Science Day celebration is in person, and we were so lucky to have partnered with Ohio State University last year to bring 300 students and their parent chaperones to campus, and then to celebrate them in a non-competitive symposium, professional symposium where they got to visit multiple areas on campus. And I'm so excited we are going to be having that again this year on May 11th um, in Columbus. And Hopefully I'll be a, a little bit more active than I was last year. Um, I was in a car accident two days before. So um, I don't remember a whole lot of the event, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it was wonderful and from everything I've <laughs> heard from everyone. So, um, so with that being said, I just wanted to kind of clear that up because I think there's still some misconceptions out there. You know, 22 year classroom teacher and science curriculum coordinator. I have to clear up those misconceptions. Um, I think there's still misconceptions out there that we are all virtual and, and that's just not the case. And so um, if you are new to this, welcome to our family. And um, I would be more than happy to work with you on the best practice for your students 
and how we can make this um, an amazing, fun, engaging opportunity for your students. Because the last thing that I want is for you to go back in your classroom and say, we're getting ready to start our science um, fair projects and have them go, ah, oh, I, I don't want that. So um, we can work together on how to make that a positive experience for them. So I'm going to just kind of go through some important things, um, some highlights, some important things for you and, and make sure that we go through those things together. So some really important um, dates to know, I've been posting a, a timeline all summer on our social media and we've been sending it out. So our September 5th um, project board, we call say project board 2.0, um, account activation and reactivation has opened back up. It's the same site as last year. I'm going to show you, we've got some new things going on. Um, I got an email today from a teacher that, that said, I'm trying to reactivate my account and it's asking me to answer student questions. And what we found very quickly was that she was registered as both a teacher and a student. And so, um, you know, those if, if that had happened last year, those are just really quick troubleshooting things that we can take care of this year um, to make sure that you don't have those frustrations as you're reactivating your account from last year. Um, new this year and definitely to take note, um, this was a request from our Junior Academy Council and also from some other partners is that the, the turnover to get things ready as far as judges and sponsors, food, the venue itself at our district science day seems to be um, really tight. And so for them to have just kind of a basic idea of participation numbers, what we have asked is that by December 15th, 2023, that each student um, and it, because they can, they can participate as an independent student. They don't have to have uh, a teacher connection. So each student has created an activated or reactivated um, their project board account by December 15th. That does not mean that that does not mean, and it's being recorded and this can go out. And so I'm going to, I'm going to say it really clearly. This does not mean that their project has to be finished. What it means is that they need to have created an account. It's kind of like, I'm going to apply to Miami University and I'm going to go ahead and create and activate my account for Miami University. And I can then work on my application after my account is activated. And so again, these are the types of skills and I can say all this because I have a son that's starting to work on college applications and all the things. He has to have accounts created um, before he can begin work on uh, his application and, and things like that. So these are all skills that we are trying to help students learn and gain through this process that will help them be successful out there in the real world um, for things that are here now and things that we don't know what they're going to be like in five or 10 years. Um, on December 16th, then the competition submission will open. That does not mean, that, again, that they have to have their projects finished by December 16th. That simply means for those that are finished, and I can tell you that there are quite a few um, across the state of Ohio whose science fair projects are finished by December 16th, that they don't have to wait until January or February to submit their projects for the district science day competition, they can go ahead and start doing more of a rolling submission for the district science day competition. Um, on January 31st, our Buckeye science and engineering fair, also known as BSEF, that window will close um, so that we can prepare for that event, which will be held in person this year at CAS in Columbus. We're so excited about that. Um, big announcement coming in November about ISTEF and the Ohio Academy of Science that you definitely don't want to miss. Um, on February 26, 2024, the District Science Day opportunity to sub for students to submit their projects for a District Science Day in the, one of the 18 in the state of Ohio, it will close on uh, February 26. We will not accept late submissions this year. It was very, uh, that's one of the reasons why if we 
have they have their account activated we know that they have a potential to submit a project for competition in march 2024 the district science days will occur across the state of ohio and we are just uh finishing up making sure that we have all the dates for that none will be held the last week in march as that is the easter holiday and we have told um, our institutions of higher education that they cannot hold a district science day on, I think it's March 30th, the last uh, Saturday in March. So they'll be start March 2nd and kind of go from there. Um, throughout the month of April, we will, we will have state science day. The competition will be virtual and, but the celebration will be at the Ohio State University on Saturday, May 11th again. So um, just some, some key dates to uh, familiarize with and we keep e we'll continue to email and post on this um, as uh, the the year progresses. So again, we um, spent we actually dug in deep for about three days and we've been working all summer to adjust and readjust based off of student and teacher feedback from project board. And um, again, I, I know that with any learning new learning platform, there's always a learning curve, but I really believe in, in this um, program. And I think that when people really take a deep dive and they, they see all that it can offer, um, they, they, they see that too. So some things to note, um, we have a new landing page to streamline things. We've updated some registration. There are two separate templates for Science Day. So again, Mary talked about following the scientific method and we've actually divided that out this year into more those projects that are hypothesis based and those projects that follow an engineering design model. Um, doesn't mean that you can't have an engineering design project uh, that falls in for Soybean Council. We, for ease of student use of the templates, we've divided those out. And then there will also be two separate templates this year, one for the student maker space and then one for project submission. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. We have lots of updated resources and we have an amazing help and FAQ tab that we've worked on. So hopefully um, teachers and students and parents and facilitators will be able to find answers to the questions that they have um, pretty quickly uh, while they're working through the process if they have them. So we're going to take just a, a quick walk through Project Board, and um, this is not going to be like a, a big thing, just showing and some highlighting. So again, um, same uh, website as last year, projectboard.world forward slash OAS not to be confused with Project Board, um, their own, you know, makerspace and, and website. So as you can see, we have a new landing page. Um, and so things are definitely streamlined here. And so um, if you are, whether you're new or whether you are um, reactivating your account we, right now to keep it nice and streamlined, it's either student portal portal for students or in grades five through 12 or teachers or um, whoever their facilitator might be. And then we, we do have a new, I like to call it halftime video that was produced over the summer. We would love to share that um, with you and, and take a look. And then some additional information um, about our programs and that are here so that you can um, see everything that we have to offer um, for students and educators across the state. Again, we are very uh, excited to announce that utilizing Project Board as a makerspace platform and is um, free for students and teachers to use. The cost will come is associated if students decide to submit their projects for district competition or Buckeye Science and Engineering Fair um, and State Science Day. So um, if you are coming into the teacher portal, you'll click on that and you'll be asked some questions so that you can reactivate or activate your account for the very first time. So um, you'll know that you're logged in when you, um, now I just have to remember my password. 
Yay. Okay. So um, you'll know that you're logged in because you'll see your little either image that you might have uploaded or your emoticon up here in the right hand corner. Then I highly suggest clicking that star up here in your search engine and bookmarking and tabbing this bad boy so that you have it and you can um, come back to it. And so it'll ask you some questions and some things that will help you walk through. So I want to show things at the top, um, your projects or any projects that your students might have worked on will be under the My Projects tab. We, our new STEM entrepreneurship program is being relaunched. It's called Ohio STEP, uh, stands for Science Technology Entrepreneurial Program. Check that out if you're interested. Science Day, we'd love for you to still see those uh, district and state Science Day projects from last year. It's a great opportunity for students to go look at peer and near peer projects to get ideas. Um, so definitely utilize that. Our Buckeye Science and Engineering projects from last year and then our help button um, that is here to provide an FAQ and to contact immediately with Project Board um, for help. So I, I do want to show you um, how we've divided these templates out. And it's been kind of cool today to see people going back in and, and getting started uh, right away. So um, so what you'll act when they go in, what you'll actually see is either the hypothesis based project um, maker, this is the maker space. This is not for project submission. None, nothing here other than where these two locks are will be submitted for anything. So um, I do want to let you know about something new that is required. And this is beyond me and the Ohio Academy of Science. Um, there's been some new legislation that has come down due to social media and youth and therefore it also impacts social learning platforms. And so um, we are required to uh, provide some sort of um, signatory from for COPPA. It is, uh, it's through the FCC to make sure, you know, that we're not doing anything that we shouldn't be with um, students who are 13 and under. And I will let you know that the state of Ohio has is discussing legislation of making that 18 and under. So this could get really interesting for youth in Ohio and using social interactive platforms, um, whether for education or for their own personal use. And so that is something that students will have to acknowledge. And um, there is a video here uh, definitely please check that out. You can scroll through the things that are needed again with the little arrows on the side and there's a, a welcome video and everything is here that they need for that section. Okay, go away. Um, then what we've done this year is that all of the instructions or kind of the, the prompts or to help through that process are at the top. That is a read only section. Students cannot do anything with that, but they can still use this as their maker space. And so um, all they simply have to do if they want to do that is to click edit section. I'm not going to do a whole lot. This is the, the template that would impact everyone's, but they, what they can do is they can add photos or videos that they find when they're doing background research. They can use this as a whiteboard space. They can add links to maybe articles that they found, um, files. Uh, they could ask a question and come back to it or they can embed something. They can even use delete everything down here and they can use this to take kind of notes. And, and so um, this is, we're really hoping that the students can utilize this as their own maker space. I do have a video here. I don't want you to panic um, because I know that a lot of people, like you said, there's none of this would be submitted. So again, just like Mary mentioned, presentation is, of information is so important. So this is a practice video. Um, this is something that's going to be totally different than the video maybe that they submit or it's the same. But bottom line is this is going to be a place where they can get feedback from their teachers as well as um their peers within their class. And so there's lots of new things that we, and then 
Uh, so this is hypothesis-based engineering design has been design divided out uh, the same as well, but following the engineering design process. So again, if you can think of this as makerspace, um, then it, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, looking to see, not sure. I don't think we have, because I'm finishing a couple of things um, for the submission design. Um, and so that will eventually be live, but the things for submission have not changed since, since last year. It's still going to be their um, abstract, their final project report, their quad chart, which we have all kinds of things for, um, their ISEF forms, which will actually be attached to their makerspace because ISEF forms are supposed to be filled out prior to, and um, and then their, their final video of whatever they might want to submit. And even though the districts may not use that video, um, or even the quad chart for anything. It's great, again, it's great multimedia practices for them to work on and develop um, for future learning. So um, those, are, those are the templates. So the template, the makerspace templates will be separate from the submission templates. So I did wanna make sure everybody was kind of clear on that. So, um, but even to submit the project, the students need to at least have created or reactivated their student account by December 15th of 2023. Um, we are going, I'm going to go back to my presentation um, here because I want to finish up with just a couple of things to let you know we are doing an official kickoff of um, all of our, our programs next Thursday from 3.30 to 4. Some things are posted on social media and we've been emailing out the link. If you want the link directly, please don't hesitate to send me an email and I'll send you that link if you haven't received it. Um, starting on Monday, September 25th, we're going to have some sessions like we did last year. It's going to be called Ask the OAS. But this year, each week is going to have a theme. And so the first week we're going to start with um, how to how to come up with a, a testable idea or a good engineering design statement. And so we're going to be working through themes, but also leaving time for for Q&A as well and the potential to do that in breakout rooms as well. And then um, on our website, there are definitely other events Oops, that are uh, coming up down the road that please check out our events tab on our website, ohioside.org for additional information for more events. Um, as always, we have uh, quite a plethora of social media that we communicate through and we also like to celebrate um, our teacher and student participants. So please check out our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our LinkedIn page. Um, we really aren't doing a whole lot with um, Twitter right now. Um, and, and so we are doing more with these accounts. And then um, I do wanna show you our YouTube account. Um, I have spent quite a bit of time cleaning up, cleaning it up and um, redoing it. And so for educators and advisors, if you go to our Ohio Academy of Science YouTube account, I have some, you can see they're very short videos to help you with um, reactivating uh, your account or creating your project board account for the first time. And then I also have um, a series for students we are going to be recording the Ask, Us, Ask the OAS. Those will show up here as well. And so, um, and so please definitely, and if there's things that come up for educators and then for students, those will be here. So please make sure you check out our, our YouTube page. Um, and so those are just quick snippets. We're going to keep them really short this year and in chunks so that students and um, their educators and advisors can access them again very quickly and specific for that topic. So with that being said, um, I definitely you know, am open to any kind of 
question and answer. And here's my contact information. Um, a McMurray. I don't have an A in my last name. Um, I did get an email today. Someone was really frustrated that I didn't have an A in my last name. They had typed it that way. <laughs> I blame that on my husband. That's my husband's fault. So, um, but yeah, so a McMurray at ohioside.org and, um, that's our office number. They, we are, we are open, um, Monday through Friday from nine to five. If you have questions, but don't hesitate to reach out. I do want to tell you that, um, Casey Harris and Sheila Kubik are back again as my amazing STEM advocates. And they can help through um, the process. We're kind of all working as a team this year, and they're doing some things with our after school grants. So, um, but they are available um, as well as our amazing staff, Dory, Allie, and our amazing executive director, Mike Wojtek, in the main office. So don't hesitate to reach out. Let us know what we can do to inspire and support you and your students through this amazing opportunity. Um, just like Mary said, I know she, you know, she talked about having, um, you know, the connection to the professionals. Well, what we're trying to do is build that next generation of professionals into the pipeline. And so what we have found is that when students are applying to college or jobs, having done that authentic research and sharing it out it, it, so many times over and over and over again, and also being able to showcase it on something like Project Board because their projects are archivable forever and ever. But click of a link, they can share that through any social media um, platform that they that they choose to, and even on an application for a job or college, um, has been very powerful for our students. And we've heard testimony from them that um, being able to share that project has been very helpful for that real world application. So I will stop sharing now and turn it back over to Jane. Well, we do have a couple questions. Oh, okay. What do we got? Um, first off is fees. There are a couple of questions. Uh, people are interested to know what are the fees for district and then sure. what would be the fees if they qualify for the state? Yes. So um, we have actually worked with our junior Academy council this year to streamline our fees. Our fees for the district science days are $30. And um, that is all, all districts this year across the entire state is um, $30. And so that money goes to, that is for that um, institution of higher education host. Um, what, you know, they could use it for aw other awards because we do have other awards and, um, and scholarships and things like that that they might give out or food and, and things like that. Um, it covers their costs um, to host that event. So $30 um, across the board. Yeah, and then there's a question oh, about- Space Science Day is, is $60. $60, okay. Mm -hmm. Just like it has been for like ever. <laughs> okay. Um, there was a question about if you register with your email, does the student have to have a special email? Can they use their district email to register? Great question. So one of the things that we've been working with Project Board is we actually sent out an, an email to every, every school in the state of Ohio, encouraging um, their superintendents and principals to um, help us whitelist their uh dish, help us whitelist projectboard.world forward slash oas and the ohio academy of science because once we're whitelisted then there isn't an issue with um using those school email accounts so um that information actually went out uh today in an email to all of our partners um i highly it's like really well written out and so um and it, all you have to do is really just either email it yourself or hand it to your district tech coordinator. And all they have to do is whitelist um, those uh, addresses and they can use any email that, that they choose. 
Um, okay, so a couple of other questions came in. Uh, it is $30 per project at district and $60 per project for state, right? I mean, it's um, it, is a it is my understanding is that is $30 per participant. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. And there was a question about why is state still virtual? <laughs> and it did Describe that at the very, very beginning, but not. I did. Um, yeah. So a couple of reasons and uh, we can never go back to the French field house. Um, Ohio State has said that um, that is just not not a place that we can use. And so it's very difficult to find um, a facility to host all of those students. Um, the 4-H facility is um, is not big enough and often. Uh, there are definitely some issues with using it um, at that specific time. Uh, we could we could rent out the Columbus Convention Center for um, an astronomical price. Uh, I don't oh, even no. want it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I did the conference there with NSTA, whew, wow, I definitely was very eye opening. So, um, but yeah, it's there's not a place. And to be even more specific. There are legalities. Um, so a lot of the institutions of higher education were audited by their insurance companies. And um, there is a whole minors on campus policy that is now in place. And so uh, it, it just, there is a lot of detail. If you want to see that minors um, on campus policy from Ohio State, I can get you in touch with their legal department. Um, it made me like, like break out into a sweat as soon as I saw it. And so they have to be chaperoned um, by a parent or a legal guardian if they're under the age of 18 wow. on campus. And that's not just Ohio. Um, yeah. My good friend works at uh, Northern Kentucky University, um, Leslie Silvernagel. She mm -hmm. was a former um, president for SECO. She's executive director for them now. NKU is, is exactly the same. So there's ways that uh, institutions can get around it, but there anyone that comes in contact with a with um, a student who is not with their legal guardian that day has to have a, like ten to fifteen hours of training. Plus, they all have to be BCI fingerprinted and have background checks, and it's quite extensive. Yeah. Uh, another question is about BSEF. It says on the district page they'd recommend, but their day is after the closing day that the district fairs are the deadline, I think. Okay, they would recommend. Yeah, on the okay. district page. So um, Buckeye Science and Engineering Fair is the, quali is the state qualifier for the International Science and Engineering Fair. There are other ICEF affiliated fairs that occur across the state of Ohio that send students to the International Science and Engineering Fair. Um, because the International Science and Engineering Fair requires us to have all of our paperwork actually submitted by the end of March, um, we have to have our fair earlier. And so that is why the closing date is January 31st um, versus February 26th. So uh, our BSEF students, these are highly these are your, your highly motivated students. They need to have a lot of data. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of data um, that, in, that the judges are looking for for that. But we are hosting that event in person this year um, at CAS on March 2nd. And then do you have to progress from district to state or do you just sign up for the state? Yeah, great question. Um, so anyone can come to the district science day um, competition. I highly encourage students to have their projects be vetted uh, by their educator, mentor, parent, facilitator um, prior to signing up for district science day so that um, so that there's not you know disappointment on that day. So definitely having the project vetted, Usually that vetting, again, can occur from the teacher themselves or by some sort of local um, look, whether that's within the classroom, um, the school building, the school district, the county, et cetera. We do not require anymore for a student to have participated in an official 
uh, local science day to qualify for district. So they can just come to district. But the only way that a student can matriculate to the state science day competition is by participating in the district science day competition. Okay, and then one last question, and then I'm gonna uh, move us on. Yeah, um, this Evan is an advisor, but not a school teacher. So how? Yeah, and absolutely. Signed? In fact, I'm highly encouraging. Um, I've done a lot of work with uh, informal educators over the last few years, and so um, you can sign up as an informal educator. So Evan, um, if you uh, want to contact me. Um, uh, tomorrow, um, we can, I can show you how to get that started, but you would still click on, I'm a teacher. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Angie. You. Appreciate you being here. And if you don't mind, would we be able to either share your, your deck? Yes. I'm going to send it to you. You can send perfect. it and then we'll send it out. out and we'll follow us. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to move on to our um, first teacher leader, uh, just an explanation that our teacher leaders have um, actually volunteered to help us out in lots of different ways. And one of the ways is to help us with these kinds of webinars. So we are really appreciative of both Donna Meller and Donna Parker. And that, uh, you know, makes it a little easier. We have two Donnas to talk tonight. Um but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spotlight Donna Miller. Donna Miller is the teacher uh, teacher from uh, Pettisville High School and she teaches many different areas of science because it's a fairly small rural school. Am I correct? Yes, very. <laughs> so thanks for being here. And Thank you. Um, I enjoy, um, well, I've done science fair a long time. And my first exposure to science fair was actually participating myself as a junior high student through Ohio Academy of Science District Science Day. So anyways, um, have had lots of experiences um, with students and you're always growing in your knowledge. Uh, it's always one of those situations where there, even today, a conversation with a student, I'm like, I don't know, I guess we'll just have to figure this out together. And um, that's part of the, the, the challenge of it is, um, is working with students when you don't know what direction, you know, the, you know, the projects are going to take and that I currently have a research class. Um, that I work with students and most of my students are um, working on um, projects uh, connected with um, their a SAE um, to FFA. Um, if years back, I used to have like all my eighth graders or all my biology students um, do projects in that. And um, I still encourage as many students as I can to plug in and participate, whether or not they're in my research class. Um, I do know that the best time to hook the kids is actually at the middle school level. Um, they don't have as much going on in their lives. Um, but I did last year was kind of a rebuilding year for me. Um, just because of some things that happened with scheduling, I didn't have my research class. I have it back this year. Um, and I had always thought, you know, with as busy as the high school students are, um, it's really challenging to get them plugged in and, and work on things. But um, I had um, an experience last year with my environmental science um, class where um, we ended up doing individual independent research projects in class um, rather than do a semester exam. And I was pleasantly surprised how engaged they became in it because they were selecting their own um, topics to explore, how they helped each other, um, and in the end, they had to present a slideshow. Now, I gave them the option if they wanted to go on to another competition, they could. Um, none of them um, jumped on that opportunity. Um, but just the fact that they took a project to completion, it wasn't the full blown project that I would have like one of my research students do um, typically, but, but it was a really neat experience to see the curiosity um, of my high school students. And these were not highly academic students. These are your, you know, average student that were just trying to get that third science credit and that. So 
Um, I guess if I was to give some words of wisdom in terms of, you know, from year to year is keeping it simple or trying to get started, keeping it simple. You can always build. All right. You're always learning and adjusting. Like right now, since I wasn't plugged in last year with students doing um, projects outside of the school, I'm on a learning curve with learning a project board myself too. And that, and um, I will say I went through the videos myself earlier this week um, that uh, the YouTube videos for teachers and they did explain a lot. And this was even more helpful um, listening to Angie and that. Um, I do think uh, creating a timeline is beneficial, um, especially if you're working in a platform where you have all your students um, completing a project and, and Jane is showing you mine right now for my research class. So even with my students that um, I worked with in a, in a isolated class, I had a timeline because you got to keep it moving forward and you got to give yourself some wiggle room um, just in case you have bad weather or just things that, you know, well, that didn't work. So now where, where do we go with this kind of thing that happens? Um, uh, all the plants die. I don't, it, there's, you just have to allow yourself some wiggle room in that. So um, I'm currently at that point where students are trying to develop those experimental questions or design goals or um, problems to solve. Um, and we'll hear now, hopefully solidify that in the next week or so, so we can move forward with um, uh, first analyzing some sources and developing those hypothesis or design goal statements. And then from there, um, trying to experiment or design to solve some type of problem. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, really, you know, I get real uh, stressed when I have students that aren't done with their, their experimentation before Christmas, sometimes that doesn't happen. And so we just make it all work. And, and it's exciting to see the kids bring it all together. And learning to break down a project into, into smaller parts is a, a life skill that they can use in any, you know, in any part of their life. And so helping them figure out how to do that um, is important. And also remembering your timelines can't meet, cannot be set in stone. Sometimes you're going to have to flex a little bit. Um, I always promise my students I'll never move a date up, but I might push it back a, a little bit if I see things going on. And it might be for an independent student. So that's that's one, one thing. Um, and the other thing is with your, your project, you basically have, like Angie said, you'll have your technical report. Um, you do have the logbook piece, which does not end up getting submitted, but it is your go-to anytime you're questioning what you're doing overall with the project. Um, but you do have your video and you have your um, presentation is it in some visual form, but pick a format, a, a template and run with it, um, whatever it might be. For me, because so many of mine are um, plugged into the FFA program, we use their, their templates for, because they have a very detailed rubric in terms of how papers are to be written and that. And so we've, we really follow that rubric, rubric closely where some of the other competitions, it's really up to, up to the teacher and that. So, uh, and then keeping in mind that, um, there's a lot of directions you can go beyond the classroom with science fair and you, you can't try to do it all. Um, I know, uh, Jane has a slide to show you that this is just some of the possibilities because there's even more online you can do with it. Um, but this is kind of just a flow chart um, that I created. If she can, uh, there it is. Um, that kind of can show all the different directions. And again, for my students, our, our real focus always ends up being for Ohio FFA Agri-Science Fair and National FFA Agri-Science Fair. I will be honest, that's not where I started because of my experience with Ohio Academy of Science. My focus had been for a long time on local district and state science day. Um, but over the years I've had 
I've been blessed with some really good networking with our agri-science program here at our school. And that's kind of the direction uh, we have gone. And we do some of the other things too. We still try to plug into Ohio Academy. We do have a regional science fair we can plug into. Um, I've done the OJSHS on occasion with a certain you know group of um, my high school students. One that I've only done once in a while, but had awesome experience with was the ODNR Wildlife Symposium, just to make a plug for them. That is not a competition. It is just a an opportunity to bring projects that are environmentally related, wildlife related together um, through the ODNR. And the students can either share in a um, in a formal presentation with like a, a slideshow or with a poster and that. So there's a lot of neat directions you can go. But again, start simple, try to just make it a positive experience for the students so that they have that desire to, you know, do something um, later on. And again, for me, I have my research class. I also offer some open labs and that, um, you know, I used to also uh, have a STEM club that I worked. So it, you have to do whatever works within your school setting with whatever age group of students you're working with and that. So, but at this point, I guess one of the last things I want to say is the biggest challenge is figuring out the question to explore. And I always start with when they start throwing ideas at me is why is this important? Who cares? What's the point? You know, you, you have to have some kind of, and again, that question still can, even can be asked to that, that seventh grade student who's doing a project that has been done many times over, but is brand new to them. They need to understand the value of why, you know, not just going through the motions of, of it, but why is there value to learning this and that too? Um, and I guess lastly, um, paperwork. That ISA paperwork can be, it can be challenging. And so if you've never done the ISA paperwork that's required for um, BSEF and for District and State Science Day, um, I would try to connect with someone, myself or anyone else who's ever done it before on how to do that paperwork and keep it as simple a process as possible for your students, because that, that can be a challenge. And then find yourself a cheerleader, all right? Some mentor, someone that, you know, is helping you move, you know, move along, right along with your students and that. And I have some great, you know, I have some great stories and experiences through all the years that I traveled in cars and buses with students to various things and that. And so it's a great extension of the classroom in terms of um, working with your students and that. So um, anyways, I guess questions, okay, anything I should hit on more, Jane? You have one question about BSEF. Uh, if a student is, could not, nope. You're, it's not true. Okay. That they could not do other competitions, but they can, right? All right. Okay. We have one other speaker. Uh, I'd love to have her share a little bit. Uh, Donna Parker is a high school teacher at Dublin Kaufman High School. And uh, so she's going to share a little bit about what she has her students do. And I believe that I have her timeline. Oh, I did want to share this screen just because this screen talks about what the names, the total, you know, the exact names of them are. So that's how you can find out about them. The Regeneron uh, are two sponsors there. And Thermo Fisher is one, I think, that has a middle school. Yes. Um, so other different uh, fair networks that are in your region or state. And I know Angie can hook us up with some of those things. So these are some other ways that you can participate. Um, oh, I guess I put the timeline there. So Donna Parker, are you uh, still with us, willing to share? I am. What time are you, was the end time? Because I don't want to infringe. Well, we, we kind of said eight or 8.30, but um, you know, for those folks who want to hear a little bit more, we're, we're going to just keep on going. And it, I, we totally understand that people might have other things that they've planned for this evening. So um, we, we won't be offended. 
Okay. Well, I'll keep this super short. Um, just to reiterate a couple of the things that you've already heard, Jane really is the pointer of all resources. If you need something, reach out to Jane. I have sent so many students her way and then like, I just don't even know what to do or where to point the kid and Jane's like on it. So she she's a great resource. Um, I think it's important to, um, like the other Donna said, it, it's okay to not know. Um, I think that's very important because kids are going to want to do projects that are just going to blow your minds away. Um, I teach a research class. So the class can either be a full year or a semester. And it really depends on whatever the kid wants to sign up for or, you know, like what the kid's project looks like. Uh, this The sample timeline that Jane's showing you is based on a semester project. Um, again, the same components are all there if it's a year long. They just have to do a little more work along the way. Um, they might, usually kids who do things with plants like to do a whole year so they can get several trials in. Um, one of the things you'll see on the list is a final presentation uh, with a paper and a poster. I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Oh, it says I cannot share my screen while um, somebody else is. Yeah, that was, I just, I have not enabled it. So sorry. No, that's fine. I think I just did. I tried to. Should be good to go. Yeah, I think so. Oh, there we go. Um, so one of the things that my kids have to do, I'm going to try to do this. I'm not very good. No, very good there it is. Yeah. There it is. Can you see that maybe? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, Mike, if you've been to OSU or any research institution, if you walk down science halls, you see posters that look like this. Um, this is one of the end pieces to what my students have to do. Um, they have to create a poster um, with all of their data on it. So it kind of takes the place of that trifold that you would see at a science fair, um, you know, if it were in person. And this is a different one. This student did work with the Arabidopsis facility at OSU. Um, they were great in terms of getting him resources that he needed to do this. Um, this student wanted to do something with psychology. Uh, those are just a couple of examples of things that students did, that final poster. As part, also with that poster, they have to do um, kind of like a thesis defense. They have to have a committee so there are there has to be someone who's an expert in the field on their committee. There has to be an English teacher on their committee, and then myself because I'm usually sponsoring their project. Um, so they sit down and they have about 20 minutes to talk through their poster, a Google slide if they want. Um, and, and again, the skills that they develop in this process I think are really invaluable in regards to moving forward and going to college or whatever the case may be that, hold, that the future holds for that student. Um, I've had several students who got into schools that they didn't think they would get into because they've done real research. And the school was like, oh, this is really interesting. And you know, some of the kids are now doing research at that institution based around what they started, their information, like their project in my classroom, which I think is really cool too. Um, the paper that, um, I don't know if this will switch over. Did it switch over? Yep. Okay. So, and, and again, this is kind of the paper that I have my students write as part of that final project as well. Um, this student wanted to look at the effects of soil additives on temperature change created by a heat exchanger. I, I had no idea what was happening. I'll, I'll be really honest. She, she's like, she's at Purdue right now studying engineering. I, I go for it kid um but it, they have an abstract and a lot of these components are all very similar to science fair my students have the opportunity to take their projects to science fair if they wish it is a choice that they make whether they want to go the route of an individual presentation you know with a thesis committee setting or go to science fair um, I've had several students do things with soybeans and be very successful both at district um, and state science fair. Um, I am convinced that my daughter today is majoring in biochemistry because she did a middle school soybean science fair project and just like could never get off the chem kick. So 
Um, you know, so you can just kind of see the format of the paper. Again, it looks very, very familiar, like as a science fair project. Um, and then all of this goes on their poster. So uh, I don't require as many uh, references, I think is probably science fair would truly like students to have, um, but usually it ends up developing into a little more than five as kids work. Um, so that might be something just to always keep in mind that kids are keeping a good track of their resources. My kids also keep a daily log. I, I do, whether I see you every day or or don't see you every day, because I have a lot of kids who take this virtually. So I literally only touch base with them um, on Google format. They are required to document what they do every day in regards to their project. And if it is today, I did nothing, we write that down. Um, they're also required once a week to talk to their parents about what they've done and questions that they have. Parents have great resources that we don't often realize. I mean, I've had, again, I have kids whose parents work at OSU who have connections that I don't have. So um, by having that conversation, the parent signs off on the log to the commit, the kid either submits it digitally or I check it in class if I see them. Um, so that everyday log is important. And even if it's, I wasted all well, 42 minutes, that's what you did. You have to be accountable for it. So again, just a couple other ideas of things that, that might help some people along the way. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. I know we have uh, just a few more minutes, but I want to make sure that I thank everyone um, I do want to mention, too, that there are many, many, many sponsored awards that the Ohio Academy of Science has. They work with many partners, not just the Ohio Soybean Council. One of our other partners is the Ohio, well, it used to be known as the Ohio Oil and Gas Energy Education Program, UGEEP. Uh, now it's Ohio Natural Energy Institute. So if you Google Ohio Natural Energy, you'll get back to their website. They have done a, a facelift, of course, with the new name change, but they also sponsor scholarships for students as well as uh, Science Day awards. So you can uh, look in their website under teachers and students and find uh, a whole list of ideas. For, and they also will provide in-class speakers and mentors. If you have a student who's interested in doing something with the science behind oil and gas. Um, so Ohio is pretty big in that uh, realm as well. You know, agriculture is number one, and I think we're like number four in oil and gas production. So um, it's pretty impressive. And we're all looking for new ideas, research and careers, the students to, to take those jobs. So I do, I was going to share just our, uh, we have our speaker, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, we have our speaker contacts here. I got to go to the right window. Uh, and then we have, um, I put my contact in the uh, chat. So if you would like to reach out and ask some questions or you're getting stuck, please feel free to contact any of us. And I'm sure that, you know, we'll all be able to help you find answers to your questions and don't, uh, yeah, don't get down on all of the, the, the paperwork and procedures, because there are people that can help you. Mm -hmm. So we really do appreciate your time. Uh, apologize for going over a little bit, but we will, uh, finish up this recording and we'll get it to people. So if you need to review anything, uh, we'll also have the deck. We'll have our contact information. So you expect an email um, in the next day or two. Thank you again for spending time with us. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.